me and hello everyone uh, and good afternoon and welcome to our latest issue of ajvc behind the scenes and our latest story i'm here with my colleague nilesh and we're going to talk about lead school uh, which was one of india's latest uh, latest edtech unicorns and one of the fastest growing in its in the edtech sector so nilesh uh, why don't you tell us a bit about where lead school started from that initial journey is really interesting it is it is it is one of india's most interesting startups and uh, one today currently as we have seen the implosion in the tech sector otherwise it is standing out as of today like a beacon of hope for our education sector uh, actually it's quite interesting that the founders of lead school are both of them had very successful corporate careers uh, it is it was founded by sumit and smita uh, they were in cpm they both of them met while they were at png singapore uh, while they got to know each other and ended up, and ended up marrying each other after spending more than a decade in large corporations both of them had a shared vision or a desire to improve the education system in their in india so they left singapore and both of them came to india smita founded sparsh in 2011 uh whereas sumit went on to become the ceo of zlearn now zlearn sounds as a uh, brand which you would not know but two of their brands are known to almost every uh, urban indian at least zlearn kidzy as well as uh, mount litra z school uh wo- these are two very popular brands in the k12 segment so what happened was before uh, launching lead school both of them worked for four five years doing this respective in this respective business which really sharpened their nose in uh, identifying the problem in the education sector in this k12 space and they felt that the experiences that they had and the vision that they had could really help other kids and uh, have a better future so they decided to go full time so to start their vision they opened their first school in august 2012 at a place areri which is 35 kilometers away from ahmedabad with a grand total of 14 students on their first day wow. uh, short yeah shortly after that uh, as uh, so this school was their one of their first proof of concepts shortly later they opened a four more centers all in maharashtra in the sholapur and raiga districts here so all these four were close by so i assume they could take a give personal attention to all of these four which are geographically in the same or the neighboring district now what is the problem that they identified in the k12 system now, all of us know that uh, there are a lot of problems in the indian k12 education system so, uh, in general the system focuses on rote learning and the students don't acquire the skills this was something this was an insight that the founders gained from their own educational experiences on the other hand parents are really indian parents but uh, are really really willing to spend on education of their kid because for them they know that education is the ticket for their ward to rise up and enter a different orbit in life they also know that the school education is not to the best of scratch so what do they do they send their kids to additional tuitions now this there is an informal tuition industry across all of india and this is across state across all of india but now yeah, what happens yeah and i know we all of us have gone through some or the other after school tuitions so uh, the but the problem is this is just a bandaid the real fix here is to modify and to improve the capability of the school itself where the kid is already spending 6 to 7 hours on 5 to 6 days of a week Byju's took a different tack. Byju's decided to focus, digitize the tuition segment, and ended up having after-school packages. Or if you see all of their ads, they're focusing on these uh, programs that they help the students do well in schools. Lead took a very different and obviously a longer approach. They decided to build system so that schools capacity and capability building happens, so that students don't even probably need to go to tuitions now for proof of concept they 
they had their first five schools to work on and they realized uh, within by 2015 which is roughly around 3 years that english education was a big gap the source of the problem according to them was that english was being taught as a subject and not as a school as sorry as not as a skill and because it was getting taught as a subject there was lack of uh, students didn't have this skill and by the way parents wanted their kids to learn english now the other thing which there was very clear is that their efforts will be targeted more at tier 2 or tier 3 towns at affordable school segment which is what the bulk of our country is so what did they do they built a product or a coaching methodology or a teaching uh, setup whatever you want to call it trying uh, with their understanding to help students become better in english early and with that they found the that this product worked now by the way lead is another uh, uh, lead is another situation where uh, you know where they have hit the gold standard in education which is demonstrating improved outcomes now from all the ads that we know everybody claims to have improved outcomes every edtech product you bring <laughs> you buy claims but lead was great because it actually demonstrated these improved outcomes once you demonstrate outcomes then it is difficult from other solutions to to move you know from the claim to actually improve it and secondly once you know how to improve then it becomes easily and replicable for you. with this thought what they did is once they perfected their english product and it was quite good in improving english uh, learning skills in students of their first five schools they figured out the processes which help transcend this journey and they converted it it into a saas product for schools wherein the idea was that if we can replicate these processes in other schools also then the problem will be solved at one shot and that is exactly what happened they raised a round for this they won sorry they won educational awards for doing this they raised a round for this and they created their own saas product targeted at private schools all across india and again given that we know what has happened from then on it is it was their product was a clear hit educators wanted teachers wanted it schools wanted it students liked it parents liked it of course yes. uh you know uh let's zoom out for a second here right and let's just talk about some of the macroeconomic trends uh happening in india right now because those are really kind of the the tailwinds that are propelling the edtech growth in the sector right so look at, first of all look at our population right we've got about 1.4 billion people out of whom 600 million are under the age of 25 and they're all going to spend on education regardless of what socio economic background they are from in fact at, as of last year um, across the public and private sector the total spend on education was 135 billion dollars so um but however there are still some uh, you know stereotypes and biases about private education that remain when we think about it like when you think of a private school you think oh wow they've got fancy playing fields they've got really really up to date laboratories they've got all these well fed rich children tapping away on ipads in air conditioned classrooms but like that preconception is wrong okay um so right now there are about 450000 private schools which serve about 120 million students or about half of all students enrolled in schools in india and like you know that is an insane insane number like after china after india's government school system the indian private school system by itself is the third largest school system globally and like this growth was driven because there are a lot of middle and low income families who want to who want to give better education to their children then the government facilities can provide so in fact if you look at our article we have a data visualization that shows that about 70% of private school students pay less than 1000 rupees a month in fees right and this is an enormous market in like indian parents are, are spending up to 20 billion dollars a year just on school tuition fees so um, the school platform opportunity for lead school is in the order of about 10 billion dollars right 
so so there's this giant opportunity to create a edtech company focused on digitizing the affordable private school market and that's up for grabs right so how exactly does lead make money right so in order to do that we got to understand how it works so um when you think of software as a service right you think of okay a company just gives you software and you're paying that uh, you're paying like a monthly or yearly usage fee to keep using that software right so lead is not that different essentially they charge schools a fixed fee of between 1400 to 2300 per student per year depending on the offerings that are taken up and this saas has a two pronged approach so one is targeting the school's own processes and the second is focusing on parents and children so so in the first prong which is the most interesting it's an os for running a school so it tracks your attendance it tracks student progress it even replaces textbooks so teachers get a special tablet which has content lesson plans so what ends up happening is that teachers don't have to take administrative overhead of managing the class and planning the lessons they get to focus only on teaching and learning right so if you are a school decision maker like this basically makes it pay for itself you don't have to have a learn lms or learning management system you don't have to pay additional for textbooks you don't have to have separate administrative software at the same time the software helps increase school enrollment and school revenue right and so as of 2019 the founder said in an interview that it has a 100% net retention rate which is crazy i mean um, so let's just talk about what this concept means for a bit so no, I'll, I'll uh, just, net retention yeah I, i like to add it. so schools today they do they are already investing in apps they are investing in lms etc in fact it's quite common for all parents to have a school app where uh, on their phone where the students grades etc all are uh, updated uh, you know in the old days the, there was a school diary which we were asked to take to our parents and get it signed mm -hmm. nowadays it's an app with an associated whatsapp group for all the parents the only difference is there is no in lead is an integrated player covering from the part of content to the operations absolutely to my knowledge there is no one else which covers the entire gamut you know and this um, and this also means this integrated approach may be one of the reasons for this 100% net retention rate that i'm talking about essentially um, if a net revenue retention rate is equal to or above 100% that means that any revenue that you lose from customers downgrading or customers leaving is more than offset by the revenue you get from upsells cross sells and add ons for existing customers so that means schools year on year your average school is paying more and availing more of lead school services every year right and that's like a great indicator that a business is growing really well um so but the, so moving back to the business model itself we've talked about the first prong which is the operating system for schools and the second prong is what you've pointed out which is the integrated parent and student app where the students get the at home learning materials the parents receive tools to track their children's progress and the best part is at least for the students the, these tools are multimodal that means that in addition to say the smart classrooms with audio video lessons that the teacher would facilitate the uh, app lets students watch videos and read text before doing workbooks or mcq type questions at home and they can have a chat option that lets students clarify doubts with the teacher in real time right and so essentially this new approach to kind of having an always on addition to the existing classroom is why lead school is so effective finally the third prong of the business model which is the most interesting one is the what they manage school program so you're aware of uh, thrasio and other e-commerce roll ups right say you're a d2c brand and say thrasio comes up and says oh your brand is making a lot of money you want to make more money let us buy you and we'll manage it for you and you know increase your growth and revenues similarly lead for an existing fee as opposed to acquisition completely takes over the day to day tasks of the school so everything from routine managerial tasks to even enrollment and admission like your school is basically run by lead um but uh, so so you can basically focus on just teaching right so uh, these models have largely struggled to scale up in india from other companies but it'll be very interesting to see how lead does something different here but you know what happened in 2020 right like the pandemic happened and so this enabler of offline schools is going to face its toughest challenge yet so um leads uh, transformation so earlier lead basically ran its own schools and now it became more asset light and a nimble kind of you know school as a service model that helped lower the cost of running the school 
and it also had better learning outcomes it claimed to improve class average marks from below 60% to 70% so by 2020 they were scaling a lot and they had more than 750 schools adopting their system in over one year from the launch but covid hit and nearly and 1.5 million schools went into lockdown and so 260 million school children in india who were suddenly kind of left in the lurch right so lead so what did lead do so most schools were struggling to put together online platforms of learning right but lead became the first education provider to set up the largest online school it so um it's crazy to think how they was able to put it together so quickly and they put together this thing called a school at home program that empowered lakhs of students to continue schooling without a single loss of learning days and it was eventually rolled out to every lead student in the country so within 30 days of the launch a record 12 million class views were seen right so this made remote and distance learning accessible to all the students and it also built solutions focused on teacher training because covid-19 helped uh, bring to the forefront a big crunch in teachers who could provide online schooling so they set up like a teachers academy to help the educators address these challenges and um, so in mid 2020 it raised another round to enable it to grow right so the pandemic provided this enabler for lead to digitize countless schools and sell to them so it was really kind of taking off and yeah um Uh, so in on the bulk of this traction it raised the series c and d funding round of 20 22 million dollars and 28 million dollars and it was just uh, and you know it's no surprise honestly like the founders had previous experience in the education sector they took a product first approach they did not do much hype or crazy marketing spends that we see from other edtech companies they, uh, that so that was just fantastic to see so you know like their business model is very different from uh, when you look at uh the other larger edtech incumbents right and i was thinking nilesh you could talk a bit about how it's different from say byju's vedantu sun academy and how lead could be a little different from that yeah so lead has the potential to be very different one of the things that makes very clear is lead first started with a proof of concept honed its ability to offer courses which actually demonstrate competence which actually help the students and then once you achieve that then success will come at your door in this business the difference between lead and others was that they had the they were happy to be slow and steady builders in the midst of hype and just over hype and valuations they had kept their minds together and focused on slow and steady build see and a lot of this would be driven by the founders previous learning with excellent with with uh, with z learning as well as fudge the indian school education market is a pretty different market why because of regulations it will be surprising to know to our uh, viewers that education has been tagged by the government as a not for profit sector which means oh. technically a school cannot make profit but any entrepreneur who sets up a school would like to take some money out for themselves so what happens is there are the suppliers to the schools are typically founders other subsidiary firms of the founder who supply books or computer tablets or other solutions class benches wooden equipment so on and so forth slowly slowly they offer at either market rates or above market rates. there has been significant representation from uh, industry groups to the government to allow schools to become for profit so that brand names can come in people who are willing to be patient and willing to play the long game but who at least would like a clean business where they can legally take a profit and not have to take do shenanigans to get this through absolutely that that is why yeah. if you see that is why i think lead school probably didn't go up into the asset heavy model of setting up schools first of all it's asset heavy so it's difficult and z learning is the is the expertise of franchise education so you know i see great sense in their choice of business model adapting to the unique realities of the indian education system 
absolutely you know uh, the, no. the last but not the least the import, it is it is vitally important for our country to have initiatives like lead succeed we spend less than 3% of our gdp on all education whether it is primary secondary or tertiary it's a very small amount and the government in its national education policy 2020 says that this has to go up to 6% which means it has to double now this cannot happen without private participation a bulk of this has to come from the private and for this purpose initiatives like lead could very well be the future in realizing the demographic dividend that we think india has absolutely um you know and, and uh, so one interesting thing right uh, when you talk about the demographic dividend when you talk about the different approach lead takes uh, when we, you i remember you were talking about earlier in this call the approach you're taking to teaching english as a skill not as a subject right um that that it's something that that they basically that their whole pedagogical approach is to enable students to do things as opposed to just memorize the textbook and write an exam and i think that's one thing that we definitely missed out when we were in school and and i think a lot of us missed out and we're really seeing the price of this right so um there are all these statistics that are saying that oh so many college graduates are unemployable so many people have only book knowledge they don't know how to apply you know apply what they've learned in the real world and this and so initiatives like lead are something that could be super important in order to help us do that yes definitely definitely i i wish the best of luck to them and i really really hope that initiatives like lead take us further down this road absolutely you know in india's at tech fueled bubble there've been a crazy outlier that every student would be proud to be a part of they've been building slow and steady for a very long time but when you see the rest of the consumer at tech firms they're struggling to find their footing and justify the valuations so yeah let's see how they play this long game and you know what happens in the future